Hello friends, today I'm back again um, starting a new sort of series for teaching people who are interested in doing reverse engineering, um, especially doing static disassembly using IDA. Um, IDA is one of the good disassemblers that's, on the, that's available both in free as well as in professional versions. Um, the free version obviously is limited to doing disassembly for um, the Linux as well as the, the Windows based. 32-bit um, executable files. However, the professional version does a lot more architectures other than x86. Um, it does a 64-bit as well as ARM and MIPS architecture and um, other architectures are, are supported as well. Um, in this case, I'm using a demo version of um, IDA that is available to be downloaded. Um, it, this one does support both ARM as well as x86 um, as well as x86 um, um, 64-bit. So um, right now, basically, I'm going to only focus on x86 32-bit because that is still um, the most prevalently used um, assembly language um, currently in, in the computer market. Uh, my goal over here is to teach some of the basics, um, and I'll try to create a small series of, um, of, um, of these videos that would explain, basically, um, certain specific aspects that a person should know when he or she is trying to um, do a static disassembly of a executable or a DLL file or something similar in nature um, for um, x86 architecture. So let's get started. Basically at this point of time I'm gonna not show you what exactly the original code looks like. This is a C executable that I have written. What I want to do is I start directly and jump into how a static disassembly program looks like uh, and, and stuff regarding that. So um, let me do that. The good part about IDA um, as a disassembler is basically it does provide you a graph view. Um, let me try to rearrange this file and let's um, see the initial graph view that's created. Um, IDA usually identifies the type of the file and sets the correct architecture type correctly. So um, this is how initially a small um, execute, this is a very small program, so you can see that you know, there are only a very few amount of functions that do exist. Um, usually the functions always start with a CRT startup or Windows main CRT startup. These are basically C routines, the standard lib and the standard um, stdio.h based um, C um, library files that um, basically, um, you know, the, the is used as an operating system startup go. Um, usually the main program for the main part of, of the content um, which is focused on your executable is usually in a main program. <clears throat> so in this case we can see that there is a main routine over here. Um, after going through the startup routines you, um, that the operating system sets, um, it jumps um, at the end to um, the main routine and that's where we start focusing on certain aspects of, um, of our disassembly. So this is how a disassembly for main program in this case looks like. It's a very small disassembly, so it is not going to be very hard to understand. Usually every function um, in C and C++ starts with something called as prologue. Uh, the prologue is usually um, it is basically uh, a set of instructions that a function has to be based on uh, the way that the stack is arranged for that function. So what basically if you think about x86 operating system, usually the stack um, grows from um, uh, you know higher address to a lower address. So in this case, it basically grows backwards. Um, and every subroutine or every routine that uh, you know when the operating system enters into it, in this case the processor enters into, um, requires a stack frame that is created for that specific subroutine. Um, that way, what would happen is um, if you are basically uh, calling two different functions each time um, if you look into the stack um, basically you will see the functions for um, the stack frames for each of these functions created and, and I guess one way of looking at that is when we actually run this program through a disassembler uh, at this point of time basically I'm gonna just do a static disassembly in the next routine we can look at um, you know the actual program using breakpoints and see how a stack frame and stuff looks like so, um, as I said, the very first thing when um, uh, before calling a specific program is uh, for um, for that routine to actually perform prologue. 
so whenever you enter a specific um, subroutine before entering into that subroutine you will see these instructions as common so basically in this case what you're doing is you're pushing the base frame pointer which is EBP uh, moving the ESP which is your stack pointer into EBP and then finally you are um, aligning the ESP and usually this is a you know different compilers do it differently I have used um, GCC with, uh, and using min sigwin so this is more of a linux oriented um, compiler this usually tries to um, word align um, every um, every address for esp so that's the reason it would also do an esp but in most of the cases like um, in M msvc compilers you would not see um, an esp usually you would um, see push ebp move esp into ebp and then it will basically subtract the esp so if you think about it, what is happening is that the original value of EVP is pushed onto the stack. Now ESP and EVP are made equivalent. And as I have told you, that the stack grows downwards. Um, so it's basically subtracting 10H, which in this case means 16. Um, so the reason it's subtracting 16 is based on the fact that um, the compiler sort of calculates what is the amount of space required for local variables and stuff like that. So um, that is the primary reason that you will see, um, you know, in this case, um, the 16 bytes being subtracted because they are, um, in, in this case, it's trying to word align. Uh, basically, if you look at it, it's calling a call on underscore main function, which is basically an initialization function. And we can jump to it um, and, and basically look at it. However, that is not what we are intended to look at. Um, the main function actually starts from this specific point. <coughs> so if you look at it, um, you are doing a sub ESP uh, minus 16. That means you are reducing the ESP by 16 bytes, and ESP now is um, 16 bytes ahead um, from the EVP. So the EVP is acting as a base frame pointer for this new stack frame, um, and now ESP is 16 bytes ahead. What you want to do now is look at how usually, um, <coughs> excuse me, usually. Um, the way it works is that before calling any function in x86 operating system um, a lot of times um, the based on the calling um, type of a function this uh, the arguments are passed in different ways usually a function uh, is called using c declare so there are a couple of conventions c declare is one of the common conventions that is used for c plus plus and c functions um standard con con call is also another part of convention and a fast call is another part of the convention Right now, we'll focus on um, the C declare convention. In this case, for C declare convention, usually uh, what would happen is that um, if you have a function that is, you know, taking let's say one or uh, two arguments, and C declare function basically um, the arguments are pushed onto the stack in the reverse order. So in this case, on the stack, you will have um, two being pushed first um, and then uh, one I'm sorry one being two being pushed first and then finally one being pushed so in this case you are basically pushing um, uh, left to right and pushing basically um, technically right to left so that way the arguments are available for the x86 system um, for that specific function correctly so in this case if you look at it we are basically moving ESP plus 10h plus variable 10h so in this case um, it's basically adding 10 edge and then subtracting again 10 edge, which is which means that it's basically storing um, at, at that specific address. Since it's it's equivalent to pushing something, but um, different compilers arrange it differently. So in this case, it's doing it using ESP. So in that point, you know you are basically pushing um, the um, the offset hello world in this case, which is a string in 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 the specific pointer pointed by esp so in this case a esp has um, you know hello world pushed on it and then it calls puts uh, puts is basically similar to printf it basically takes one argument and um, in this case it, it, it's similar to printf so it's since there's only one argument and the compiler replaces with, with puts because puts only takes one argument and displays that argument on the command line so in this case if we look at it technically if we understand this code what it's trying to do is pushing um, the hello world string and then calling puts so that means it's displaying hello world on on the on the command line now <clears throat> let's move on to the next instruction once that is completed if you look at it so as I had said in the c declared convention 
the stack arguments are pushed um, from right to left in the reverse order. Uh, in addition to that, uh, it's up to the caller to actually create or clear up the stack for that specific um, you know, argument. So what would happen is think about it. If you're pushing the arguments in the stack, somebody needs to clear those arguments before you move on to the next part of the functions. So in this case, um, I'll explain to you when we get to the leave instruction. Uh, usually in an MSVCC compiler, you would see that you know um, it would arrange the value uh, correctly for, for that specific. Since only one function, in this case, since only one offset is being pushed out, and that offset is used. Technically, it should have done is what ESP plus four, so that the ESP moves correctly back to its original position. Um, however, the leave instruction sort of does the same thing. Uh, moving on to the next one, in this case, we see that there are three ESP arrangements. One is ESP plus 10 H plus variable eight, which means that it's adding 16 and then subtracting. Now, anytime um, so IDA basically does two things. One, it, it basically arranges the local variables and then it arranges the arguments. Whenever it's trying to access local variables, it will use the term var. Or whenever it's accessing arguments, it will use um, ERG um, as sort of a suffix. So that will help you understand that these are variables or arguments. So again, if you look at it, there's a call for try underscore print function, but before that, it is basically, technically, if you think about it, it's basically moving these values into um, into the stack. And if you look at these values, we will convert them into uh, <clears throat> into their native decimal form as opposed to the hex form that usually IDA supports. Um, you can do the same thing for everything else. So basically, you can rearrange this. Um, and this makes it much more easier to understand the, the print conventions. So if you think about it, it's basically moving the value 13 in ESP plus 8. So that, that means it's basically pushing the values onto the stack. So the ESP is um, at a higher address, at a lower address, and it's basically arranging the, the, low, the higher addresses so that when um, so that the stack is filled up with correct values before calling this function. Now, if you look at it, that means it's basically you know substituting three values. One is it's moving ESP plus 8 into 13 into it, it's moving 12 into ESP plus 4, and then it's pushing, uh, it's basically like equivalent to pushing uh, maybe 13, 12, and 11. So basically, it's going to be pushing uh, 13, 12, and 11. So um, we can see in this case that the stack is being, uh, these arguments are being pushed onto the stack in the reverse order from right to left, um, or left to right in this case, in a straight order. Um, however, the arrangement is you know, in such a way that it looks like it's left to right. Once that is completed, um, you will see a call to try and scope print. So we know at this point of time that you know this specific function does take three arguments, and those three arguments seem to be integers in this case. Now let's jump to try and scope print. Um, and so we can see over here again, as I had said, every time when you enter a specific uh, function, the function is always started with a prolog, and so that's the same thing that happens over here. Uh, basically, in this case, the compiler makes sh uh, ensures that there is enough value for the local variables that are required. And so that's why it again does uh, the same thing. So, so once we um, call the try underscore print, we are out of the main uh, function. And so to keep create a new stack frame for this function, this is the same prologue that goes on. And you can look at this, that it basically subtracts ESP again by 24 so that it gives up enough space. So sometimes, um, Compilers obviously do this to, you know, obviously do a word alignment uh, for four bytes, but at the same time, they also want to make sure that there's enough space for um, <coughs> additional values that might get or scratch variables that might be used inside um, that function. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert all of these things um, to the decimal form so that it's easier for us to understand what's going on. Um, and you can leave it uh, as, as you like it. It really depends on the person's um, Liking, but I truly prefer them to the decimal form as it helps me to understand um, you know, what, what, what is there and what is present uh, in that specific function. All right, so in this case, if you look at it, once we complete the prologue, um, next thing that it is doing is uh, you know, accessing EAX um, and the value from EBP plus 16. So remember, the base point of um, hat is arranged after the ESP. So if you think about it, you have 
your uh, <coughs> 11 12 13 and that's where ESP was pointing at the time when you call the function however now the prologue is gonna make and the EPP would be usually pointing uh, you know some bytes below so now when you do a push EBP the original value of the EBP is you know stored in the stack this way now EBP is also pointing um, to basically uh, obviously um, usually what, uh, one more thing that gets pushed also is the EIP value which is going to be the next uh, return value and that's the reason usually stack overflows work however we are not concentrating on that aspect what I want to do is keep it to static disassembly and how you know reverse engineering gets done quickly um, and as we have seen uh, ESP will now point somewhere over here assuming that this is you know minus, minus 24 so as we see it's going for lower to lower address what EPP does in this case is become sort of a base pointer that you know does not move and remain static so it's easier to use EBP to reference arguments so whenever you're referencing arguments if I have to access for example 13 um, what I want to do is do um, you know access using EBP plus 8 um, now obviously there are some other scratch values as well that are pushed um, onto the stack like for instance it could be a canary uh, that is uh, you know used to protect against stack protection and then alignment of EDP and stuff like that would result into some four more values over here so that's why we see that um, you are calling the very first function and that's pushing EDP plus 16. so in this case if this isn't the case what you want to do is EBP plus 16 is going to access 11. Um, so all the arguments are always um, added in terms of doing a plus and all the local variables if are accessed using EBP are do done by doing a subtraction because you're moving to lower addresses. And that's the reason you would see over here that the value um, uh, in EBP plus 16, which in this case should be 11, is moving to EAX. Then EAX is actually moved into ESP plus 12. So remember ESP um, is over here and it's moving it down. So basically what it's doing is moving the arguments um, into local um, into the local scratch space that has been created. So it, it will do the same for all the other values. So you can see that EAX is moved into ESP plus 12. Again EBP plus 12 is moved into EAX and then EAX is moved into ESP plus 8. Finally um, EBP plus 8 which in this case as we see um, is going to be 13 is finally moved into ESP plus um, you know um, ESP plus 4 so it's equivalent to you know taking the arguments and pushing them into the local space for that specific stack so in this case it would be um, you know 13 12 and 11 would be moved up and that's how you know you would have your ESP pointing over here again I'm sorry your ESP pointing over here again uh, once that is done, these sort of become, so the reason it has to do that is if you can look over here, also ESP is also pushed up with this specific string, which is basically printing person D, person D, person D, and then calling print F. So basically what you're doing is the reason you had to move those arguments over here in the local space is the same reason. Um, it's basically pushing the values for the next print F call. And basically these things, so moving these values from EAX into ESP plus 8, ESP plus 4, and ESP plus 12 is basically, you know, creating the arguments, which seems like it, in this case, printf is taking four arguments, which means um, the 11, 12, and 13 are passed are, you know, this is 11. So I'm just gonna, <coughs> um, wanted to actually comment it out, but it seems like um, this is a demo version, so it's not allowing it to comment. But um, if you can imagine, this would be 11, this would be, um, you know, 12, and this would be 13, and then this is a So think about it. So based on this understanding, how how this function looks like? It looks like try underscore print is taking three integers, and then basically calling printf, and then the printf should have um, this specific uh, string as the first argument. 
and then seems like it has three more arguments and we we'll call them a b c and it seems like basically all i'm doing is printing three values and then basically you know. um, so since nothing is pushed back into eax usually eax in x86 is used to return values um, either a pointer to a location in the string or an integer or something like that. So in this case, since nothing is pushed into EAX before returning, uh, it seems like this function also has a uh, you know a return type of value. If there was some kind of um, return value in that case, that would be you know ended up being pushed into um, EAX, and then you would have seen the leave and return. So now basically we understand how try printf looks, try underscore print looks like based on understanding the specific static disassembly. Um, as I had said, what I want to talk about now is epilogue. Epilogue is basically something that um, is the reverse of prologue. Usually in um, GCC-based compilers, uh, the leave instruction is added instead of an epilogue. The epilogue exactly does everything reverse of uh, of, um, <coughs> of the prologue. In this case, basically what it's going to do is it's going to basically add ESP with 24, move um, the va original value from... Um, you know EDP uh, which was stored to EDP and that return is going to basically jump uh, to the specific um, EIP that we had stored which is the return address this is going to be basically the, this value which is move EX0 so as I had said in this case looks like so if we had to kind of understand how what main is doing it seems like main is uh, doing two things so one um, you know, this is int main. I'll get to the idea why it's int main and not void main. Um, it's basically printing, doing a printf. Hello world. And it seems like um, there is a slash n. What is it? If you go to the offset, you should be able to see. Um, it seems like there is db world and then zero. So I'm assuming that I'm going to you know, leave out the slash and usually this should have a, a, a 0a or 0h depending on that aspect it's doing the printf and then it's calling try and let's go print and passing the values 11 12 and 13. so just by looking at the static disassembly we have been able to figure out what main and try and let's go print um, are doing even without knowing uh, you know the actual source code for this so this is how usually reverse engineering works so usually you have to understand where does the function start by identifying the prologues and epilogues identify um, how many arguments can be taken so one more way of under understanding that is you know in a leave instead of, if this was a leave um, it would be replaced by basically an epilogue which does exactly opposite so if you saw something like add esp plus 16 uh, basically that would indicate at that point of time that there would be possibly four arguments that are getting pushed in this case uh, however we are only passing three arguments but including the aspect of hello world this would be basically four arguments if you think about from the main functions perspective um, and then obviously it's going to push back the values in EDP and stuff like that so it's doing exactly the opposite of an epilogue um, usually but this is replaced by leave um, instruction in, in a modern you know, operating system as opposed to pushing all the epilogue, which it does exactly the same thing. Now the reason I said that this was an int main is I, I told you that if any value has to be returned back at the end of the function, that value is pushed into EAX and we can see that the zero value is being pushed into EAX. So looking at that aspect, I would say that this function would have basically returned zero. And that's how this function looks like in, in the source code, which, will, which I'll show to you in a few minutes. So that's pretty much for the disassembly of a simple program. Um, keep in mind that there are three things that we have to consider when you look at it. Understand where a function starts. So function starts are initiated or marked by prologues, usually in, uh, in, in anything. Understanding the number of arguments. So look at um, arguments uh, how do you do that is uh, look at push instructions how many push instructions do exist before a call 
if three push instructions exist, that means possibly there are three arguments that are being sent. Um, usually, uh, like I said, rather than doing a push, GCC compiler would adjust the values using um, ESP. So moving something like ESP plus um, 8 and then moving the value in there is equivalent to doing a push 12. Um, so that is one thing that helps you identify. Um, so the call function, uh, or the call instruction, is the instruction that's used primarily to call any sort of function. So whenever you see a call within a, a specific function that you're looking at a block of, you know, assembly, that would indicate that there is a separate call to another function. When a function is called, uh, basically, you know, you again see the same things: the prolog, uh, at the end of the function, again you would see an epilog, which basically does a reverse of uh, of a function prolog. So that should kind of explain to you how to look for things and understand with even without having access to the source code um, from x86 operating system architecture, uh, this specific uh, you know, a source code aspect. You might not be able to get the exact essence, but uh, to wait on the aspect, we have been able to reverse engineer and understand um, what these two functions are doing. And so now I guess I'm going to show you the real code. And if you look at the code, it's pretty much exactly as we had defined based on the disassembly. And if you do play the code, there you go. As we had seen, it says hello world and friends 11, 12, and 13, followed by tabs. And that's pretty much it. All right, thanks, folks.